And from my recent survey, how many people shoot below 10 frames per second regularly? The answer is 83%. The clear majority do not shoot high frame rates. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. Today we've got a pretty important subject to talk about and that is authentication. Now, over the last couple of years, and it's ever accelerating all the time, AI is now pushing into all parts of our digital worlds, whether it's the written, whether it's music, whether it's stills, or even now the creation of video. AI is doing it all. Now, it's questionable as to how good it is. Certainly when we look at images and video, certainly when it comes to the written word and even music, there's some pretty impressive examples out there where you might not even know the difference. So what is it that the camera industry, and that would include Leica, Fuji, Panasonic, Canon, Sony, Olympus, Nikon, and if I've missed anybody, I'm sorry, DJI and more, in wanting to ensure that we, we creators, can actually prove that what we're creating is real. Like, how is it that right now I can prove that what you're seeing is real? Maybe it's not. Maybe what's going on right here right now is not real. I certainly can't prove it because there is no authentication in my Z6 III, which we're shooting on right now with the beautiful 50mm 1.2. And this is the exciting news today. Nikon is working on a firmware update for the Z6 III to include authentication. Nikon develops firmware that adds a function compliant with the C2PA standards to the Nikon Z6 III full frame mirrorless camera. Nikon Corporation is currently developing firmware that adds a function called content credentials based on the standards set forth by the Coalition of Content Provenance and Authenticity, the C2PA, to the Z6 III full frame mirrorless camera. The Z6 III equipped with the firmware currently under development will be exhibited during this year's Adobe Max 2024 Creative Conference held October 14th to 16th. And thus, the firmware is here, it exists. C2PA firmware development for the Z6 III, Nikon is committed to developing solutions including compliance with the C2PA standard with the goal of protecting individuals and enterprises in the imaging industry and ultimately society from the unfavorable results caused by fake images and or unauthorized use of images. Our aim is to implement a mechanism that preserves original unaltered image data recorded using the camera, making it easier to verify the authenticity of images and protect the rights of photographers. This firmware currently under development for the Z6 III to reflect the results of testing of the mechanism's practicality as part of the workflows adopted by news agencies is is scheduled for release to some news and other agencies in mid-2025. Nikon will continue to work to address the ever-changing issues surrounding image authenticity and contribute to the further development of imaging culture by working towards a society which those involved in the imaging industry are able to conduct their creative and business activities with greater peace of mind. Also, Nikon Nikon plans to have integration with Frame.io. Nikon Corporation plans to make its NX Mobile Air app, which enhances the efficiency of professionals' workflow by providing high-speed image delivery without using a computer. Compatible with Adobe's Frame.io, the industry-leading creative collaboration platform that streamlines and simplifies workflows across content creation and production. The version of NX Mobile Air that will include support for Frame.io Camera to Cloud is currently being developed. Nikon hopes to release this latest version in the first half of 2025. The version currently under development allows the 
automatic video file upload to Frame.io, enabling smooth cloud-based sharing and collaboration. Nikon will provide a more efficient workflow by seamlessly connecting the entire video production process from recording to final edit with support for Frame.io. Nikon will continue to provide software updates to satisfy the needs of those involved in video production and to contribute to the development of imaging culture with the hope of further expanding possibilities for imaging expression. As somebody who has been a professional photographer who's in my fourth decade of doing this, I haven't finished the fourth decade, but I'm in the fourth decade, photography has changed profoundly. The first cameras that I used didn't have autofocus. We were shooting film, light meters were rudimentary. The idea of a computer generating something that we would now have to prove whether it's real or not real was not even imagined that it would happen in real terms. It might've been in science fiction. We might've seen something in say Blade Runner that we went, wow, that's exciting. In human terms, the evolution of humanity, in the evolution of technology, we are absolutely at the spearhead of change, just accelerating and accelerating. Ever since the microprocessor arrived and computing arrived and the miniaturization of computing has just gone in leaps and bounds, over the last half century or so, it is unbelievable the world that we live in today. It's mind boggling what we're all having to deal with. And the thing is, the world still needs information gathered and it still needs information gathered that we know is real. And in some situations, as much as some people will say the the smartphone will take over everything. Those tiny little sensors, which are like 10, 20, maybe even 30 times smaller on average to your 35 millimeter sensor, there are some things that those sensors just can't do. Not only is computing not really gonna take over there in all circumstances, but we also need professional hardware that can capture in specific environments where a phone is just simply not gonna work. On top of that, we now need the authentication of those images. Is the image captured, whether it's by a phone, smartphone, or whether it's by an actual camera, which does a better job of capturing images in all sorts of situations. We can make a list right here. And that's not a definitive list of some of the situations where, look, a smartphone really doesn't cut it. They're trying really hard. But it's computational, and it's arguable that even computational has a, a little bit of AI in it. Well, it's, it's probably got a lot of AI in it. The way that we've seen how Apple creates its files, it's often mixing lots of images, a whole lot of images together, and it's making choices about those images and then compiling that into a single image. Now, it's not that there's anything wrong with that, but the smartphone is making the decisions for you. Authentication is very exciting. We can see here that Nikon is planning on allowing it to be in the hands of journalists first and how that workflow actually works. I don't know yet. It's something that I will look into when this firmware actually arrives. I presume it will arrive for everybody. I presume we will be able to tag, everybody will be able to tag their images. Yeah. And from then on, it may well be that the software that the news agencies use is able to read this digital watermark, whether it's actually a watermark in the image or whether it's just simply in the metadata. It's possible that that software is something that you would have to buy if you want to actually be able to authenticate images. What I would be super interested in is, for example, if I open something in Capture One or in Lightroom or any other raw editing software, not as a news agency, and it is able to say this at this stage is the image that was captured and it hasn't been altered. And then from there, it can express what the alterations are and whether they're color, brightness, contrast, and so on, or whether it's actual pixel editing and removing and changing the actual pictures, not just the intensity of light and color. So will there be that sort of fine grain understanding of what's happened to an image or will it be binary? This is pretty much the original image. Yes, this has been altered. 
it is not the original image. And will it just be that? I really look forward to seeing how that unfolds. And if anybody knows any more about that, please do let us all know in the comments below. But look, I really like this. Over the years, I've done a lot of judging of photography competitions, all sorts of competitions. For a number of years, I was a judge on photography competitions for the Melbourne City Library, this massive library, hundreds of entries. And we had absolutely no idea the authenticity or originality of those files. And of course, they could have been photoshopped. It would be really interesting for any type of competition photography to know how much or whether an image is in camera or it's been worked on. I always wanted to see sort of two categories, sort of in camera images and worked on images, because I do think that it's an unfair advantage if you're making an image look amazing, but you've done some of that work in post. Whereas if you capture an amazing image in camera, that is quite a skill. There is a lot that goes into creating a moment and getting it all in camera. There's a lot of applications for this beyond the news. I really look forward to hearing more about this Z6.3 firmware update, and hopefully we see it for other cameras like the Z8 and the Z9. Obviously, other Nikon high-level professional cameras. We'd love to see that in that space. Of course, let's keep in mind that if the Z9 is on a four-year cycle, well, sometime next year is that four years. Maybe it won't happen for the Z9. I don't know. Maybe it's too old, it, which blows my mind because it's such an astonishing camera still today. All right, everybody. Well, I'd love to hear your thoughts about image authenticity, whether you would like to see it in things like camera clubs, photo competitions, let alone in the news, us knowing that images really are real. I think that's really important. We have some pretty serious things going on in the world, and we want to know if what we're seeing is what we're really seeing. I mean, who saw SpaceX land their booster rocket in the giant chopstick tower? That is one of the most phenomenal things. It was almost like I was watching Star Wars. It felt like science fiction, but it was real. Unbelievable. I'd love to have a a conversation about this in the comments below. I think there's a lot to talk about. There's lots of layers to this. And I think at the end of the day, it's only a positive. So good on the photography industry for trying to address and solve this problem. All right, it's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. Bye for now.